It's showtime! All of you f- sold us out. You said you did it for the culture. What culture? The track culture? You was running the whole f- fight. We seen it. And then you was looking scared. All he act- ran all fight. And no shout out to Derek James. <laughs> Leaving you, bro. You better, you better do something fast. You got one more fighter to go out that way, and then you, you, all your big fights, boys. You going outside? That nigga, that gym gonna be empty soon. You better do something fast. Nigga. It's how two fighters lost. He trash at this point. Nobody give a f- about yeah. that nigga. You, I don't know how you won coach of the year, trainer of the year, whatever. Yeah, yeah trainer of the year. That nigga, that garbage. So I'm looking at his Go. face. And you can see what we seen on the instant replay. When the punches was coming his way in slow motion, he was like, he was like, he was scared. That yeah, nigga he was kept scared doing that. Nigga. Was just like, you went wow. in for a check, my nigga, and you were embarrassing. And you saw this. Bro, now, come on, bro. Charlo, can we get our eighty nine dollars back, please? Please, because you got to think about how many eighty nine dollars spent because. He sold us a dream. Now we know what you're getting when Canelo come to the table. Yeah. Charlo lied. He got to get back 40 of the 89. Knocked down. You didn't even get knocked down. You took a knee. A yeah, that was, you. that was a surrendering move. Yeah. To yeah. Earl. And yeah. he tried to diss Earl in the. Um, no access. He definitely no tried access. to say Errol Spence was all tired. I ain't trying to be Errol Spence. I, I got more respect for Errol Spence than yeah. you. Know. Huh. Cameron. And Mace Gumble, I've been around the world. I've been around. They go in on Jamel Charlo. Hey yo, what up, you guys? It's your boy Boxing Fanatic, back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe for the latest and greatest content. Well, you heard it. You heard it, Cameron. And Mace, they going in on Charlo. Basically saying what I said in my video was he just came there to get a check. He didn't come to fight. He showed too much respect. He looked scared. He didn't put up a fight. He didn't even try to fight. He didn't even try to show that he came to fight. Jamel Charlo... Like Terrence Crawford said, he came there to lay down and he let Canelo Alvarez spank him without no resistance. And he tamed the lion, made it into a cub. That ain't what Terrence Crawford said, but I'm just, you know, emphasizing. But yeah, that's all he did. He just came there to get a check. And it's, it's sad that, you know, Charlo, as good as a fighter that he is, because I am a Charlo fan, both of the brothers. I love Jamel and Jamal. But I was mad that Charlo, he, yeah, he, he was looking like a cab driver. I ain't going to even cap. He was looking like a cab driver. He put on them running shoes. He put on them track shoes. And ran the whole night. I mean, I I couldn't even see him throwing over a hundred punches in the fight. I don't know why he was so hesitant. I don't know if it was the speed or if it was the power or if it was the IQ. And you can see Canelo Alvarez, he had been he had been preparing for a track meet because he was learning basically to cut off the ring like how he was doing he was cutting off the ring on Jamel Charlo and Jamel Charlo didn't have no answer for what Canelo Alvarez was doing basically and he already knew what Canelo Alvarez game plan was from the first from the first place but Charlo probably said in his mind hell I'm finna come to this fight get these probably 10 or 15 M's or 20 M's or whatever he got paid for the fight and that was it because he didn't really come to fight he put no effort he showed no effort he showed that he was intimidated he showed that he was scared 
and not really put up a really good fight that we all was anticipating on from the way and the looks of thing how he was sounding and how he was putting things and saying this and saying that but we really didn't get what he was saying and was trying to portray the image he was trying to put out that we all know what he is capable of doing he just didn't do it and from Cameron to Mace they can't blame Earl Spence loss and Jamel Charlo loss they can't blame it on Derrick James he can only teach them and show them and train them they have to go out and execute it themselves. So they can't put the loss on, on, the, on the trainer. No, that's not what we doing. You can't do that. Their James don't have anything to do with the way that they perform. It's up to the fighter because he can't fight for them. Nobody in the arena, nobody at home, the trainer, the mom, the dad, nobody. He's the only one that he, he got those pair of gloves on. He got those shoes on and got the mouthpiece in. He got his trunks on. He the only one can fight. Nobody else can fight but him. But I just felt like he could have done more. It would, I mean, people would probably will appreciate the fight more than, you know, more than what he was trying to portray. The way they looking at it now, like Earl Spence is really the dog because he really came to fight. Even though he got, you know, knocked down, four times in the fight he was still getting up he was still coming you seen his his uh his tenacity of you know his 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 gritness of he still wanted he still was trying to fight unlike charlo charlo was in survival mode you know he was looking like a cab driver he was looking like a foreigner you know just running around the ring and that's what he did. He looked like he trained more than he looked like he ran more in training than sparring. He should have brought in like eight or nine different sparring partners to really prepare him for a true dog like Canelo Alvarez, being that Canelo done been in the ring with the likes of, you know, the Floyds, the Beavils, the Lauras, the Trouts, the Mosleys, the Kodos. The GGGs, the um, all the fighters. I ain't got to name them all, but Charlo should have known that, you know, Canelo Alvarez ain't coming to play no game. Like how he said at the press conference, he going to make him respect his skills. And after the fight, Charlo had more respect for Canelo's skills and power and will and determination because he went out like a champ. And it was another belt on the line and Canelo Alvarez that was his fourth time defending his uh undisputed belts and Charlo didn't even put up a fight was trying to become undisputed in two different weight classes in the full belt era that ain't gonna happen nah not even if he go to 147 that ain't gonna happen because he's still gonna have to do some work he still gotta defend his belts at 154 you know and Tim Zhu fighting for that, that scrap right now. He fighting for that scrap right now. So um I don't even know if he'll probably if Tim Zhu I don't win the fight. I don't even know if he'll get in the ring with Tim Zhu from the looks of things. Because Tim Zhu, he's not a Canelo Alvarez, but he's a much slower fighter. Charlo will probably have a better enough uh 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 I don't know. I, I think Charlo just went in this fight fearing Canelo Alvarez. I think he just went in there and seeing. I think if Tim Zhu do what Canelo Alvarez did in the fight, he'll probably beat Charlo. Because Charlo will get on the bicycle and run. I won't, I won't even call it boxing. He'll just run like how he did with the Canelo Alvarez fight. He just moved around the ring and wasn't even trying to put up a fight. And that's what most people are probably mad about right now, saying that, you know, they want their money back or half of the money, you know, because Charlo didn't even, he didn't even participate, really. He just showed up for a check, got paid, you know, when he got knocked down, it was a flash knockdown, 
and he just popped right back up and continuously to get on the bicycle and move around the rain. And that's the way I looked at it. And that's the way Cameron and Mace looked at it. And everybody else probably looked at it. It was the biggest night, September 30th. <laughs> Everything stopped. All the Mexican fans, all the boxing fans, everybody. Did. Canelo stopped it. He stopped the world. It was like a it was like a Super Bowl. And Charlo didn't show up. He showed up, but he didn't show out. He took off. It's just, man, I, I just hope Charlo can just, he bounced back from it. No need to hold his head down, but he can't go out like that again because if he go out that, like that again, everybody's going to say, oh, Charlo, he ain't the same. Just like how they was saying about Canelo Alvarez, he ain't the same. They're not going to want to see him fight. They got they not going to want to spend their money to see him fight. So he got to redeem himself. And if not, you know, because he fighting, he fighting for the fans. Basically, cause they paying to come and see him. So he got to get that right, you know, next time out. Um, y'all let me know what y'all think. You know, if Cameron and Mace was on point with what they were saying, from how y'all said, I mean, probably felt. Y'all let me know what y'all think, all right? Make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe. One love, one life. I'm out. Peace. If you enjoy content like this and you want to see more, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe.